Minnesota. Here we don't call it a defogger, we call it a defroster. And if yours isn't working, you should probably get that fixed. My name is Nate Johnson, and this is Wrench Sense. So the rear defrost in my Yukon is not working. If you look a little closer at that clip, that previous clip of me running over a chicken, you can see that little cord hanging down in the back. That is the tab broken off the grid for the rear defroster. I'm gonna use a product by Permatex and try to repair that on a spare rear window that I have laying around. The reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna try two different fixes. The first one being the Permatex uh, rear defogger repair kit. The second attempt I wanna make is with a soldering iron to actually solder the tab back onto the glass. When you apply heat to safety glass, it can thermal shock very easily. If I get too much heat on the glass, it will explode. On one side of the rear glass, I'm gonna make the repair with the Permatex. On the other, I'm gonna use the soldering iron. The second option of soldering the tab back onto the glass is risky, and I want you guys to know that. If I can make the repair successfully with the soldering iron, I'm gonna take it a little step further, and I'm gonna ex put excessive amounts of heat onto the glass with the soldering iron to get the th window to thermal shock. If I can't get the window to thermal shock with the soldering iron, I'm gonna use some other resources at my disposal because I want to thermal shock this glass. I wanna see it explode. I mean, it's fun, right? So stick around to the end because I wanna thermal shock this rear window. If you'd like to try this Permatex rear window defogger kit, part number 21351, I'm gonna put a link down below in the video description. You can click directly on that, it'll take you to Amazon. You can buy this product, it's pretty cheap. While you're down there, you can click my little logo WS in the bottom right corner. It'll give you the option to subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see some more entertaining videos as this, I'm doing my best to entertain you guys. So the Permatex rear window defogger, the instructions are very, very specific. If you want this to be a successful repair, follow the instructions to a T. Do not stray from them at all. Do not cut any corners. If you do, the repair will probably be unsuccessful. So let's move over to the rear window and we'll try to uh, we'll try to make these repairs and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here's our rear hatch. This is the area where the contactor had broke away from the rear defroster. Uh, it looks like someone has actually made a repair on this before, possibly using the uh, Permatex kit. So that's not very encouraging, but we're going to try it anyway. Uh, the first thing you want to do is take some sandpaper. I just have a roll lock here, used 80 grit and you want to sand that old stuff off of there, being careful not to, because if you see I'm shining it up, and you can see the metal uh, grid work here, you don't want to wear through that. So what I'm trying to do is just sand, sand the old stuff off without harming the integrity of the grid itself. Being careful not to cause too much damage, and if you're going to scratch it a little bit, it's not a huge deal. So I'm not going to actually go over the old position where the tab was. I have a tab here that I'm going to try to use. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this. I hope you can. It's got two spots on it, and I want to go here and here. Let's face that up, actually. Here and here. So I'm just trying to make this spot as clean as I can with the sandpaper without damaging the grid itself. Go here and a little bit in there. Okay. That looks like it'll probably be alright. And then I'm going to take my tab out. I'm just going to shine up the contacts on the tab itself. Clean any kind of stuff off them. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty shiny. Okay, so next they want they give you this little pack of activator, and they want you to do this a specific way where you open it, and you're not actually handling the the activator itself, which is right here on this little blue towelette deal. And they want you to wipe this on the surface of the window. And they want you to wipe this on the surface of whatever tab you're going to use. Like so. Now, they want you to leave this 
for five minutes without touching this area or the area there on the uh, on the tab itself. They want you to leave that to dry for five minutes. It also says on the instructions not to leave that more than 15 minutes before applying the adhesive. But what we can do in the meantime is another set of instructions say they want us to knead this packet for a couple minutes. Make sure it's mixed up really well. You don't see any inconsistencies in the color. They want to see a nice tan color th throughout the, uh, the pack of adhesive. And we're going to wait a couple minutes and let that uh, do its thing here. Okay, so we've kneaded our packet up. It's been the required time for that to dry. I'm just going to take some scissors, scissors and snip across the top of this, the adhesive. Next, the instructions say to put, without touching the contacts here, one little drop. Oops, wow, I'm getting a little carried away. One drop, doink. And one drop here onto the surface of the tab. This is going to be a little tricky. And I'm going to go ahead and place it onto the glass in the areas where I want it. I'm going to hold that there. They say to hold that into place for one minute. Okay, I've held that in place for one minute. I'm just going to take a piece of tape put that over the top of it just to make sure it doesn't get jostled let that do its thing they say you want to leave this sit for 24 hours before you attempt to reconnect your lead for your defroster grid so that's what we're gonna do okay here we are back again with our tab I'm gonna take this tape off of here Let's see what's going on with this Man, it's really on there it's really on there okay so what you can do now if you wanted to test this if you have a multimeter you can check put one of your leads here and one of them on the grid itself and see what the resistance is it should be very low um, I guess the uh, resistance does tend to go up um, the longer the uh, item cures then the next step would be just to reinstall this in your vehicle and uh, and uh, turn your defrost on and it should be just fine. Okay, now we're gonna try the interesting repair, the one that's risky, that's probably a better repair, but a more durable repair, rather. But it is risky, because like I said, if we thermal shock this glass, it's gonna explode. First thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna take a little brush, I'm gonna put some soldering paste onto the glass, just in the areas where the uh, conductor is. Just a little bit, don't, don't need too much. I'm gonna take my little weather soldering iron here with a messed up tip but it'll be just fine. Hold down the trigger and let that warm up. See the smoke rising off it? That means we're getting hot. Going to take and see if we're starting to melt some solder yet. Yep, okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this directly onto the glass. And this attempt, I'm going to try not to thermal shock this glass. But if it does, I got a tarp underneath it. And it will catch any exploded glass. So right now, see how we're, I'm just feeding some uh, solder into it. So it's sticking onto the tab. And that looks pretty good right there. I'll put a little more up here. Try not to breathe this smoke coming off of this. It's not too good for you if you try this. But if you have a soldering iron, I'm sure you're aware of that. Okay, now I'm going to grab our our little tab here. Put a little soldering paste on there. Doesn't take much. I'm using a pliers because this is going to get hot. Fire up the soldering iron again. Let her warm up. Now I'm going to heat this up a touch. Okay. Now I'm going to come back down to our contact on the glass. I'm going to warm up this solder again as best as I can. Try to get it liquid. Looks pretty good. Spread that around a little bit. Now I'm going to stick our tab right onto that. I'm going to work the solder around. You want to get this solder so that it flows, but at the same time you don't want to overheat this glass because you don't want to break this. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Give it a little more heat around the edges. Like so. Let's see if that worked. 
Okay, we'll let that sit for just a few seconds. It's gonna be hot, so don't grab it with your bare fingers. Okay, so that's stuck on there pretty good. Of course, then you just be able to plug the lead from your vehicle into this tab and your defrost should work. So now we're gonna move on to the exciting part. We're gonna try to actually thermal shock this glass, see how much heat it actually takes. First, I'm gonna try the soldering iron. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna move on to a heat gun. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna pull out the bottle torch. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taped the trigger on the soldering iron so I can just plug it in and apply heat to that. And when I plug it in, I'm gonna start the stopwatch. Okay, soldering iron is plugged in. I'm starting the stopwatch and we're gonna let it roll and see how long it takes to thermal shock this glass or if we even can with this soldering iron. You can see she's warming up. I have no idea if you can see this, but we're at 20 seconds. You can see that tip's getting nice and hot now. There's one minute, there's two minutes, that's three minutes, there's four minutes. Just to demonstrate that this is still hot, I'm gonna touch a little soldering flux to the tip of that. Yeah, she's melting it. She's still hot. I thought she would have gone by now. There's five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. I mean, I think if this doesn't work by the 10 minute mark, we'll give her a little bit longer. Then I'm gonna switch to something else because I want to see this window explode. And that's 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. We're gonna switch to something else. Okay, so that didn't work. After 10 plus minutes of the soldering iron on the glass, as we just witnessed, it did not uh, explode the glass like I had hoped. I'm going to switch to something a little more aggressive. This is a heat gun. It's not like a blow dryer. This thing puts out a lot of heat. I'm going to start my stopwatch as I turn it on. Okay, that's 10 minutes. I'm going to try a little something here. Ice water. Nothing. Unbelievable. Okay, well, apparently this glass is a lot stronger than I think it is. Time to get drastic. This is a bottle torch. <laughs> Step back. Unbelievable. I cannot honestly believe this glass has not exploded. Hmm. Apparently I need to add a stopwatch for this too. We're about a minute in, but I just started the stopwatch. That glass is turning hot. It's orange hot. Not sure if you can see that or not, but it's glowing real good from this bottle torch. So we're at about a minute 20 seconds with the bottle torch on the glass, and I cannot believe it hasn't thermal shocked. Look how red that's getting. She's hot. Okay, that's about two minutes with the bottle torch right on it. I gotta get some results here. Let me try something quick. Ice water. Still nothing. Unbelievable. I cannot believe it. This glass apparently is a lot stronger than I thought it was. But we'll keep her going. We'll start over. Okay, that's one minute since we tried to douse it with ice water. And there it went. <laughs> and when she goes, she goes. As you can see, it just spread out all over the place. Good thing I grabbed my torch there. That was about a minute and 10 seconds of uh, the torch directly on the glass. Pretty dramatic, uh, it took some pretty uh, impressive heat before it finally let go. But I'm gonna shut this off and clean up. So I wasn't expecting that. Um, I've always heard you can thermal shock that glass very easily. Seems to me like you don't really have to worry about it too much unless you're putting a bottle torch on it. Is all safety glass created equal? Nah, that's a good question. I think if I were to do the solder repair on uh, my own vehicle. I would be pretty careful. Um, I think you could probably still have an incident, but it's pretty amazing to see how much heat that safety glass can take without uh, without an explosion. I did the uh, Permatex repair on my truck uh, yesterday after I did the one on the uh, rear hatch that we had on the uh, table over there. 
and it's working just fine. Um, I can't speak of the longevity of the repair because, well, it's only been a day, but it is working. If you want to try the Permatex, go for it. So thanks for watching. That's all for this time around. Good luck on any repairs you're going to attempt on your own rear defrost, and we'll see you next time.